Hey guys and warm welcome back to the channel. In today's video, well, I'm super excited. I've been out shopping and I have purchased myself a new number plate to go on the 308 project that was once owned by a music icon. I'm gonna reveal what it is and the story behind it a little later on. But first, grab yourself one of these, kick back and enjoy the video. Now, if you do follow the channel, you will know that I like to jazz my cars up with what I like to call jewelry in the form of a number plate. Let me show you some of the ones on the other cars. The 360 has one of the first private plates I ever bought, uh, and this was meant to be my initials, SC. Now, to get an SC plate, it's extremely expensive. So we have 555 SC, and then I've got an X, but then some clever person's put a dot in the C, and it makes it look like a rude word. No comment on that. And then we have the Rattarossa. That is wearing the plate 123TR, TR being Testarossa. A lot of Testarossas are referred to as TRs. 512TR was the uh, later version of the car. Anyway, I bought that one at auction and it's now worth a lot more than I paid for it. The trusty Nissan truck wears a plate which is as close legally as I can get to my surname. Even Lexi gets one on the Mini. Don't ya? <laughs> <laughs> Not happy that I'm putting her in the video with no makeup and no thing on. <laughs> And then we come to my 355. Now this is not a private plate. This is the normal plate that the DVLA assigned to this 355. And they have kindly assigned this Ferrari with the number plate Guff. Thank you very much, DVLA. Even my youngest daughter has a number plate. Her name is Nicole and this I bought when she was three years old. So technically she can't actually put it on a car until she's 17. But uh, I have learned my lesson in the past. I missed out on a number plate, which was for my eldest daughter. At the time, I just couldn't afford it. It was Maya One. Now I regret that ever since. I should have really pushed myself and tried to buy that. If anyone knows where Maya One number plate is, please let me know in the comments below. Number plates can be a great investment if you get them at the right price. They are big business. For example, in 2014, the number plate 250, which looks exactly like 250, and is the absolute perfect plate for a Ferrari 250 GTO, sold for an eye-watering 518,000 pounds, which in comparison to the car it's probably gonna be sat on, the 250 GTOs normally sell for over 50 million pounds. It's small in comparison. The number plate F1 owned by Mr. Khan of Khan Automotive Designs is rumored to be worth more than one million pounds. Pretty good, huh? So today's plan is we're gonna put the plate on the car. We are gonna take the roof off. We're gonna make use of this beautiful weather we're having here in the UK. But before we can do that, we have a few little jobs to do to make this one roadworthy. So we've got some uh, lights and stuff like that, wiring at the front, a few little bits at the back. So let's crack on, get through those as quickly as possible and get this baby back on the road. Now, before I start getting all dirty down here, let me tell you about today's video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. How I love to use them to not only protect me, but to also save me a bunch of cash. Surfshark provide a ton of benefits, including things such as protecting your passwords, shielding you against targeted ads, and one of the coolest features, allowing you to bypass internet censorship and country restrictions. Do you know even YouTube blocks certain content in different countries? Remember, access is a right, not a privilege. You can do things such as save money. How? Well, by getting better rates on things such as airfares, car rentals, hotels, even roaming charges, all high cost items. How do you do it? Well, because depending where you are in a country, your IP address often determines how much you will pay. With a simple click to bypass and place your IP somewhere else, say Mumbai, India, you just saved yourself a ton of money. But here's the best bit, use my promo code and you will receive a whopping 83%, yes you heard it right, 83% discount plus three months extra 
free. With so many other great features Surfshark offer, check them all out yourself. I'll put a link in the description below the video. Click on it, get yourself protected and save some big bucks at the same time. My big thanks to Surfshark for supporting me, this channel and all the videos you love to watch. Make sure you click on the link and support those guys in return. Now, let's get back to work. Now that we've done the deep dish front valance, the QV grill, we've added the spotlights, we've figured out the front bumper and we've done all the side lights. There's one final thing we need to do to the front end of this QV. And that is to change these US side markers, which I modified for the MOT to make them into side indicators to these original Corello indicator lights supplied by C Performance. So let's get on and do that, finish off this front end. Well, they've all fitted okay, they're in place, but I don't know what happened to the wires for these. I think that they must be somewhere tucked in the front there. I've got a set on this side, but for some reason I cut them. Uh, so <laughs> now I need to take the front bumper back off and uh, locate the wires. Two more jobs to do on the front of this car. We need to wire in those side indicators with a permanent solution. And number two, we need to wire in those lovely yellow fog lights that we've added. That means running some cables to the cabin of the car. Okay, so watch this. We've got our little uh, temporary switch put in place. First of all, let's check the back out. We're doing indicators and we're doing fogs at the same time. So all the rear is working. We've got side lights on as well. Doing a full test here. Let's come to the front of the car. Yellow fogs, side lights, indicators, side indicators, and the side, side indicators. So, we are fully working. All lights, fog lights, and I've just made an adjustment to that pop-up light as well. Just need to uh, give it a little bit of lubrication because it's a bit squeaky. And then other than that, time to bolt it back together. Tidy up some wiring and then it's done. The next job we need to do is bolt this front valance in place. It's all just loosely fitted at the moment. So it just means we need to take our Sharpie, come down here, and just mark up all of the holes down the side. That is the front end on the 308, almost done. We have done all the wiring, all the conversion work. It's just the uh, repaint and the body work to do now. But compared to how it was before, with all of that massive US bumper, the grill and the small valance, I am super happy with how that's come out. So we're gonna to jump to the back of the car now. There's two jobs we really need to sort out here. Number one is the fixing brackets for this exhaust. Now, as you can see, it's pretty solid anyway uh, with its current fixings bolted onto the manifold. 
but we do need to put that solution in the uh, framework there just to stop this vibration and hitting anything. Um, so we're gonna try and figure that one out. I've got a little plan there. Second job is this valance. We just need to tidy it up, uh, line it up, and then uh, secure that as we've done with the front valance on the car. My postman has just arrived and delivered some of these. So this is the bobbins I've ordered. Now I went quite big. We've gone 50 mil on those. And that's the original spring mounted. You can see it's just slightly bigger. That's not my problem. It's more height wise was the issue on these things. We have the rear valance off the car. Now, if we come down here, we're gonna try and figure out this exhaust. So here's our bracket. Here's our bobbin. Now, really the exhaust, we just wanna push it down very slightly so it just holds it down there and then we create a gap here so if my bobbin is here we got the bracket there we got a hole so if i put a well the box section in there this can bolt into there now we need something to convert this end to bolt onto here and i have an idea so if we hop on over to my workbench these are the old brackets that came off the car as you can see, this was the uh, bracket that we cut off the uh, the chassis, uh, which was completely in the wrong place, so we had to do it. And they are quite rusty. They also have this part here, which pivots quite nicely. But I have a different idea with this one. Those are rusty. This one came off the Testarossa, and back there somewhere in a box, I have the other one of these, which is in much nicer condition. So these are the ones I'm going to probably use now. The only part I actually want to use is this here, this little fork, which as you can see, will come off. Now, first of all, let's just see if that fits nicely on there, which it does really good. And then that brings us up to about this height. So here's my idea. Let's take that off there and see if it is the same thread as the bobbin. So that's our part. Ah, it's a shame. So this bobbin has an M8 thread on it. So that's an M10. Now, what I could easily do is order up a couple of those. They're very cheap. Um, let's get some, I think that's probably the solution. So if we had an M10, one of those, in there that will screw in there nicely that gives me height adjustment as well and we put that on here we have a little box section welded here that is going to be perfect so we're going to make a couple of brackets to go on the 308 on the frame at the back to suspend those bobbins from and uh well unfortunately i don't have all of my um workbench here so i'm going to have to cut it on this wall again So this is what I've come up with. We've got the bracket in place there. Our bobbin, when we get the right size one, will sit in there. I've created a bracket. We've just cut this off. I'm just gonna clean it all up. I had to cut this off because it was hitting the valance. So we're gonna weld that in place there. And then we're just gonna have that like that. And that should do the trick. While we wait for those replacement bobbins to arrive, I've put a temporary solution in the form of just literally a long bolt in there, which actually seems to be doing the trick, except we just don't have any kind of dampening on it. So uh, let's move on to the next job. Before I can give the car a shakedown test, I need to look at one more thing, and that is the handbrake. So we have the wheel off here. 
we've got one part that hooks onto here then my question is it goes through here but with all of the modification we've done is it going to clear all of the exhaust system so we have the actual mechanism there I've got a couple of new bolts to go in. We're going to bolt that to the frame and then with a combination of the parts diagram and the very handy videos, videos Heidi and Franny sent me, I reckon I can figure this out. So we've got the short end that goes to this side. We've got the long cable there which goes from the opposite side and this is the cable that runs to the actual handbrake itself in the cabin now that is already in the car might be a little bit rusted up so it will be replaced but for the time being i'm going to see if we can use the one that's in the car because it will save me a lot of work so we're going to hook these up for the little hooks on the calipers themselves bolt that on and just see and keep those fingers crossed that the cables miss all of the framework and the new manifolds Well, it's all in place. All our cables are there. That was a bit of a nightmare of a job. Uh, let's show you down here. It's a cable over there. Nothing hits on that side. And this side here, you can just see where that is just clipping the manifold. Just that adjuster bar there. So, we're either going to have to modify it slightly or figure out another way. I'm just going to heat this up so if we can just bend it down slightly. So we don't need much on this one. Okay. And that's done it. Now, as you can see, by knocking that down very slightly, it's given me the clearance I need down there on the uh, cable, so we're not touching the manifold. Now, if you look at Heidi and Franny's car, the Euro car from factory is exactly the same. It's really close to that manifold, so that slight adjustment has fixed our issue. So that is all the jobs done needed to take this car out for a little shakedown drive, but first I am going to reveal the new number plate and the history behind it. So, close your eyes, no peeking. I will tell you when you can open them. Keep them closed, nearly there. Okay, open up. Ta-da! Rat 1T, or Rat It, which is absolutely perfect for this car, or that car, or that car, or most of my Ferraris. Anyway, I love it. I think it's brilliant. Let me tell you the history behind it and how I came to get hold of this one. Ratic number plate was previously owned by music icon Keith Flint, frontman of The Prodigy. They were massive in the late 90s with global hits such as Breathe, Firestarter and of course Smack My Bitch Up. Their albums such as Fat of the Land racked up numerous awards worldwide. Keith was a petrol head known mainly for his passion on the motorcycle scene. Sadly, however, in March 2019, Keith passed away. Some of his collection of awards, furniture, artwork, and the number plate all went to auction. And a few months later, I have managed to buy it. So I'm hoping that Keith is sat up there looking down with a smile on his face. As a fellow petrol head, he appreciates uh, the car that has gone on, the uh, very ratty 308. So uh, Keith, here's to you. Thanks for the great number plate. Now let's take it out for a spin and see after a few months and a lot of modification how this car behaves.
one. As you can hear, it's not firing on all eight either. Well, I tell you what, it's a snarling, growling. It's not your typical Ferrari sound, this one. Um, it sounds good though. I think when we got it on all eight cylinders, it's gonna sound pretty spectacular. Well guys, that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy the number plate as much as I do. Don't forget, check out Surfshark. Link is in the description below the video. You can also follow me over on Instagram where I accidentally gave away this number plate in the background on a story yesterday, but nobody spotted it. Here it is. Shagtastic, yeah? Look at these guys, where are you going, eh? <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Ciao for now.